Hello fellow YouTube friends, followers, foes and flabbergasters, my name is Mason and it is time for Guild Wars 2 On Point Combat Basics. Now that we've seen the functionality of direct damage, also labeled as power damage or strike damage, we can tackle the second type of damage in Guild Wars 2, condition damage, or in short, condi damage. In Guild Wars 2, conditions are negative effects that you can put on enemies and many conditions deal damage over time. Aside from ground area of effect skills, they are the only way to deal damage over time to an enemy. Since they deal damage over time, they usually have lower burst damage in shorter encounters, but deal more consistent damage in longer fights. They also keep dealing damage when leaving a boss shortly for another enemy, for example. All damaging conditions stack up in intensity, so you can layer multiple instances of the same condition to increase your damage. There are 5 damaging conditions in Guild Wars 2. Burning, Bleeding, Confusion, Poisoned and Torment. They all have different side effects. Burning and Bleeding have no particular side effects. Burning deals higher damage over shorter time frames, so it is burstier, while Bleeding lasts longer and does less damage per second per stack. Confusion deals additional damage whenever the enemy casts a skill and Poisoned reduces healing effectiveness. Finally, Torment deals increased damage against enemies standing still. One important thing to know is that condition damage bypasses all armor. So in PvP for example, increasing your toughness is not a suitable way to counter condition damage builds. There are a few ways to counter conditions though. You can either have enough vitality and healing power to outheal them, or you can cleanse them off using specific skills, traits, runes or sigils. All damaging conditions tick once per second, starting one second after their application. If your condition duration extensions lead to a duration not equal to a full second, the last tick will apply the partial damage on the full second after the condition ran out. Also, condition damage updates for every tick. So if you gain or lose stacks of might, for example, over the course of the condition, its damage will change dynamically. Similar to strike damage, Condition damage also benefits from the Might Boon and the Vulnerability condition. So make sure you have these covered even if you play a Condition Damage build. Aside from ignoring armor, Condition Damage does not depend on your weapon strength and benefits from two stats only, Condition Damage and Expertise and this brings me to the base damage and scaling of Condition Damage. The first attribute that increases Condition Damage is, well, Condition Damage. This increases the damage per tick while Expertise increases your duration. The duration extension, however, is capped at 100%, so you cannot more than double it. But how does the scaling of damaging conditions work? First off, each condition has a base damage value that you always get, even if you have zero condition damage. On top of that, each condition has a unique scaling factor for condition damage. Burning has the highest, bleeding and poison have the lowest. This multiplicative term is then added on top of the base damage. This is the damage per second that the condition deals over its duration. So let's move over to expertise which you can find right below the condition damage attribute. Similar to conditions having a uh, base damage, they also have a base duration. But this base duration on the condition varies per skill. Some skills apply burning for 3 seconds, some for 4 seconds for example. This base duration is then increased by 1% for every 15 points of expertise that you have. On top of expertise, you do have some condition-specific duration extensions included in runes, traits or sigils. These exist for pretty much all conditions out there. So in total, you have the base duration times 1 plus expertise divided by 1500 plus the sum of percent bonus durations on the condition that you're looking at. Keep in mind though that the last term in parentheses cannot exceed 200%. So if it is greater than 200%, it will simply be set to 200% instead. Now let's bring everything together, so we get the total damage that the condition deals over its entire duration. We have the base damage plus the scaling coefficient times the condition damage times the base duration times 1 plus expertise divided by 1500 plus the sum of percent bonus durations. A difference between strike damage and condition damage is that strike damage benefits from 3 stats while condition damage only uses 2. So the question in terms of condition damage is should you go for condition damage or expertise? The answer to the question is often pretty trivial. Most gear options that are practically used on Condi builds, so Vipers or Trailblazers, give you both. In structured PvP you do not even have access to expertise, so it's condition damage all the way. Outside of that, Vipers gives you the highest damage because it also increases your strike damage by a significant amount, and Trailblazers gives you a ton of defense while not sacrificing the main part of your damage. 
However, you need to keep in mind, as I said before, classes often make use of traits and runes that increase the duration and damage of certain conditions, so you need to make sure to not exceed 100% on the most important conditions for your build in terms of duration. If you play a Firebrand, for example, and go for full Viper or Trailblazer gear with the rune of Balthazar, will exceed the 100% on burning, which is responsible for most of their damage. So what you would do is you would mix in some more gear with only condition damage, for example sinister stat combinations, to avoid wasting stats. Now let's try and verify the formula that I've used here. In order to do that, we're going to take a closer look at the burning condition on the Weaver build. The Weaver Sword skill Flame Uprising applies one stack of burning for 4 seconds. Using an Ascended Viper Sword with a Sigil of Malice grants 108 condition damage, 59 expertise and 10% condi duration. Adding 25 stacks of might nets a total of 858 condition damage and almost 14% condi duration. If we plug all that stuff into the formula, it nets a value of 264 damage per second from burning for a total duration of 4.55 seconds, roughly. So what we would expect is to get 4 hits of 264 damage and 1 hit of 147 damage in theory, resulting in 1203 total damage of the condition. Let's look at the numbers in-game. So let's hit the dummy. 1 tick, 2, 3, 4, 5, with pretty much exactly the numbers that we've calculated. So now I hope you have a better understanding of how condition damage works in Guild Wars 2. This is it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm and see you next time.